I've spent many years studying the history of the universe. But today, I would like to look into the future with you. There is an African proverb that says, if you don't know where to go, look where you come from. Maybe we should look up as well. The night sky has always been contemplated by mankind with fear or amazement. It forces us to think beyond our basic needs. Today, we are going to go through the three evolutions. The universe, life on Earth, and the third evolution, of which we are all part. More about that later. So let's start with the first evolution, the universe. You will agree with me that as soon as you look up in the dark, you see the empty vastness of the universe. Well, it's not so empty and it's not so dark. We live on a planet, the Earth, circling a very dull star called the Sun. And our Sun is circling inside a very dull galaxy called the Milky Way. And there are billions of stars in our galaxy. And there are billions of galaxies in the known universe. So that sets our human condition in a very isolated and dull place. So, how, um, it has only been in the last century uh, that we understand the universe evolves. Uh, galaxies and stars have not been always around. Um, when we work out the expansion of the universe in reverse, the picture was very different 14 billion years ago. With the Big Bang model, we now understand what happened. The latest Planck satellite image reveals the universe when it was only 400,000 years old. We live in a single universe that looks the same wherever we look at it. I spent 20 years of my life, along with hundreds of other scientists, studying that map. Here, the details have been exaggerated. But this image is much smoother than the skin of a grapefruit. Yet, we are lucky to see some ripples, because they are the signs of what will eventually collapse to form the galaxies as we know them today. Within galaxies, stars can form. And then a new range possi of possibilities happens to make uh, complex atoms. For example, do you know that the spoon you use to eat your porridge every morning is made of metal produced in a supernova explosion? Uh, this image on the left shows how the death of a star can spread iron in the galaxy. Other stars can shed carbon, oxygen, nitrogen elements, which are, which are central to the chemistry of life. These elements are then incorporated into the next generation of stars. This is what happened to the Sun and our solar system. Thus, the evolution of the universe is central to producing interesting atoms, the building blocks of the next evolution, life on Earth. How life appeared is still a mystery. But we now understand the basic properties of life. All living bodies on Earth share the same DNA and the same cell structure. The evolution of life from simple cells to complex multicellular organisms like onions, dolphins, scorpions, is now understood. Darwin has found the engine for evolution. Natural selection operates on various attempts made by reproduction with variations. And better adapted species are selected from the constraints of the environment. There are several methods for natural selection to operate. For example, there is the arms race. Bigger, taller, faster. 
more poisonous, and so on. Cheetahs can, can run fast and grab the weakest gazelles. Thus, the gazelle population gets reinforced into the faster running ones. And if the gazelles go fast, then in the cheetah population, only the faster one will thrive. A new equilibrium will then appear between the species. And Darwin was stunned at how the adaptation of all the species to their environment. Another way selection can operate is for species to find ecological niches where no one else is present. For example, the bat uses the night sky to fly around and find food and then sleeps when all the other species are active during the day. A bit like teenagers. <laughs> the peacock illustrates sexual selection. So here, the survival of an individual is increased by its attractiveness to the other sex. For the peacock species, the male has all the beauty. For other species, it's the female. In general, evolution works as a blind process with inheritance. And uh, it, it's a bit like a bush in which there are many dead branches. Only the top twigs are still alive on Earth. And favor favorable changes are carried over from one generation to the next. The genes, which are chunks of DNA that could increase the population size, have made it in the long run. So Homo sapiens is just an animal at the end of one twig. Hope it doesn't break. Other Homo species, like uh, Homo habilis, do not exist on Earth anymore. They are on dead branches. So this standard picture should not be a straight line as on the left, but rather a bushy tree as on the right. So what is so special about human beings? Not bones, not brain, not even language. Dolphins have language. So here is a bold idea to wake you up. My contention is that Homo sapiens have several written languages. They are not only utilitarian languages like English, but they are also music, the arts, mathematics, and so on, opening new worlds. Our species can thus communicate in space and time, and this is what I call the third evolution. Ideas which are exchanged between one brain and another can propagate much faster than genetic inheritance. In the past, it took four days for a man on a horse to travel from Manchester to London. Nowadays, it takes less than three hours on a train to do the same journey. Well, if a train is on time. Whereas the genetic evolution is slow, the speed at which uh, the information can propagate around the globe makes this third evolution possible. OK, so the first evolution is the universe making bu the building blocks. And the second evolution is about complex life. So let me tell you more about the third evolution. So we have our own circles, family, friends, city, country, sport, faith. And we show loyalties to our social circles by doing things in common and exchanging ideas. For example, I don't talk football with my wife. I have another circle for that. I think that the third evolution is cognitive in nature. It is all about the link between people and their social circles. And it has happened in the last, in the, in the last 10,000 years. And these social circles are now quickly merging around the Earth. All these circles are somehow represented in each of our brain and are coded with chemicals between neurons. Neurosciences have made a great leap forward. But we are still very far from understanding this strange object called the brain. We've barely scratched the surface. 
There are 100 billion neurons in each, of, in each brain, which is, by the way, the same number of stars in our galaxy. Each neuron is connected with at least 10,000 other neurons. The brain is only 2% of a human body weight. However, it uses 20% of the oxygen intake and even 25% of the glucose consumption. And despite popular belief, we do use 100% of our brain at all times. So in fact, the human body is just a slave taking care of a central processing unit, the brain. But a brain is nothing on its own. For its development, a brain has to connect with other brains to synchronize ideas, like a chair, food, love. So the social side of human beings cannot be overstated. We start as some little fragile being thrown into the deep end, having only our parents to help us cope with life. And this is the immersion in our social circles that makes us become who we are through education and by having more interaction with others. I think it is fair to say that, in a way, we are born at 20. It takes 20 odd years just to get afloat with the complexity our civilization has reached. Some people at 50 still don't get it. <laughs> Back to ideas, which are central to the third evolution. There are many stupid ideas, splash on a puddle, children like that, or forbidden ideas, score at football with your hand. And there are, many, there are also sustainable ideas. We are all equal. Ideas fly from one brain to another by communication. And that's where the society acts on those ideas, by filtering them out. This is a sort of natural selection in the Darwinian sense. There are no good or bad ideas, They're just ideas which are relevant or not. That's typically how religions can spread, or some food dishes. They are somehow adapted to the society we live. Darwin was fascinated by the way some birds in an island were so well adapted to the available food. Okay. Technical, technological advances show the selection process vividly. The arms race is everywhere. More blades on a razor to get a cleaner shave, or flying higher, faster, longer, more comfortably. And there are also ecological niches, say a drone. It has a limited range, but it doesn't require a pilot on board. And there is also selection by seduction, for example, with a brand by Apple. So we find in the evolution of technology the same patterns as in the Darwinian natural selection. So comparing the three evolutions, the universe, life on Earth, and ideas, we can see that one evolution is embedded in the previous one. So let us now describe some of their common interesting features. For a start, they are all digital. They are ruled by round numbers. Atoms in the universe have each got a discrete number of electrons, and that gives rise to the periodic table of the elements. And all living bodies on Earth are DNA coded with only four chemical letters, A, C, G, T. And the third evolution is coded by letters of various alphabets. And now, binary coding is everywhere. Another common feature is diversity. Many outputs can be obtained just by assembling the same building blocks in different ways. There are many genes in common between giraffes and okapis, or between onions and leeks. They are just combined differently. And for the third evolution, linguists are amazed at the number of ways we can combine words to make meaningful sentences. OK, another feature, which is most paradoxical feature, is unicity. 
we live in a single universe. As far as we can observe, the physical laws we have found on Earth apply everywhere in the universe. And there is a single brand of life, the one which is coded with DNA. And there is only one species that carries a third evolution, Homo sapiens. Another feature is inheritance. Complex life does not occur spontaneously. Animals are born with almost the same genes as their parents. And in the same way, strong ideas have a history and they are transmitted over and over. This is what we call communication of general practice and knowledge. Finally, we have seen that the three evolutions share similar selection processes. So now is a controversial issue. I claim that a new method has emerged among humans to select ideas. In only a few centuries, the experimental method has led to a growing corpus of scientific knowledge, which is just staggering. So we are constantly generating new ideas, but the ones that withstand experimental evidence will spread like wildfire. This is it. End of our journey through the three evolutions. The universe, life on Earth, and the third evolution, which is how human beings exchange ideas in space and time. The more you share, the more you can advance. Enlarge your circles. Go out of your comfort zone and over the edge. Look around for inspiring ideas. Make mistakes. Well, not too many. Making mistakes is part of selecting ideas. Put the concept of evolution into your everyday thinking. Things don't pop out of nowhere. Where you come from gives you a big clue as to what lies ahead. Thank you very much.